Hello, my name is Christina Doling, and I'm a research coordinator at Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago, Illinois. Today, I will be presenting work I conducted in collaboration with doctors Katie Cronin, Steve Ross, and Lydia Hopper, investigating the relationship between personality, season, and wounding receipt in zoo house Japanese macaques. First, I'm going to overview Japanese macaques as a species, then discuss what makes personality an important individual difference to examine in captive primates, the research history of looking at personality in captive macaques, and our current study. Along with rhesus and long-tailed macaques, Japanese macaques are one of the most common macaque species housed in captivity in both laboratories and zoos. About 120 Japanese macaques are housed in zoos accredited by the Association for Zoos and Aquariums, which you can see on the map. Since so many are housed in captivity, it is worthwhile to study their welfare status in captive environments and taking an individualized approach to their care is key. In the wild, Japanese macaques live in very large, multi-male, multi-female groups. Males immigrate out of their natal groups before sexual maturity and groups have a strict matrilineal dominance hierarchy. They are also seasonally breeding primate species. Because of their strict dominance hierarchies and social groups comprised of many members, there is frequent intergroup conflict, which is heightened in the breeding season. As wounding from intergroup conflict in Japanese macaque social groups is common, those managing captive groups seek to understand predictors of wounding in order to optimize care for captive macaques. Therefore, a previous study by Cronin and colleagues looked at predictors of wounding in zoo house Japanese macaques. They found that season, being breeding or non-breeding, and sex, but not age class, were predictors of wounding rates. We were interested in examining additional potential predictors of wounding rates, such as personality. Another species of macaque that are also commonly housed in captivity are rhesus macaques. Behaviorally, rhesus macaques and Japanese macaques are very similar. Therefore, information about the better studied rhesus macaque is sometimes used when developing management plans for captive Japanese macaques. Previous research with rhesus macaques has revealed that their personality ratings are related to behavioral patterns and measures of health and welfare, such as wounding. Though Japanese and rhesus macaques are similar socially, they differ in their personality structures. Therefore, information about rhesus macaque wounding and personality may not translate to Japanese macaques. And so we wish to study Japanese macaques directly. Our objective was to investigate whether individual differences in personality ratings also might explain some of the observed inter-individual variants in captive Japanese macaque wounding. Due to past research with rhesus macaques, we hypothesized that personality would be related to wound receipt but we did not have specific predictions about which components would be associated given the difference in personality structure between the two species. We studied 48 adult and juvenile Japanese macaques living in eight AZA accredited zoos in North America. The macaques were housed in mixed sex, continuous full contact groups, ranging in size from three to 24 individuals. For our analysis, we used wounding receipt data collected as part of a previous study run by Cronin and colleagues, which I mentioned earlier. Keepers were provided with standardized wound forms, which can be seen here on the right. They recorded all instances of wounding observed ad libitum. However, wounds that were self-inflicted or were from a non-social source, such as a scratch from caging, were not recorded. For our personality ratings, we used scores calculated by Hopper and colleagues as part of a previous study on zoo house Japanese macaque personality. For that study, keepers who had worked with the macaques for at least six months were asked to complete a short form questionnaire that was comprised of 26 traits, rating each monkey they worked with on each of the traits. A principal component analysis revealed that the traits loaded onto four components. These are listed in the table on the right showing the traits that loaded onto each component. Thus, each macaque had a score for each of the four components, being anxiety slash reactivity, dominance, 
openness, and friendliness. In our current study, we combined the wounding and personality data from these past two studies for all 48 of our subjects. For our analysis, our outcome variable was whether or not an individual was wounded for each day of the two-year wounding data collection period. Our predictor variables were personality and season, given that past research had shown that season is a predictor of wounding. Unfortunately, we could not also examine the effect of sex due to the small number of males in our study. Overall, we found that wounding rates were low across institutions with a total of 451 wounds reported over the two year study. Supporting previous research, we also found that the macaques experienced more wounding events during the breeding season as compared to the rest of the year. We ran a series of mixed effect logistic regression models, which included subject ID as a random factor nested within each institution to examine the role of season and personality. We compared them using AIC values. When comparing each of our models, we found that the best model included the predictor variables of season and the personality component of friendliness. Our best model revealed a significant interaction between season and friendliness, such that in the non-breeding season, there is an effect of friendliness on wound receipt rate. Macaques rated higher arm friendliness were wounded less often during the non-breeding season than macaques rated lower on friendliness. We hope that our results can provide an additional layer of insight into captive welfare by highlighting the predictive value of personality on wounding in zoo house Japanese macaques. We also show the importance of species specific research and rejecting a one size fits all mindset since studies conducted with rhesus macaques showed differing results from our study. Unsurprisingly, we saw more wounds received on average in the breeding season since Japanese macaques are seasonal breeders and are more aggressive in the breeding season. These results call attention to the complex relationships in seasonally breeding primates between season, personality, and welfare. Thank you so much for coming to my talk and I will take any questions at this time.